Today we're in Italy on the island of Sicily and we're here to eat. We're in the capital of Palermo and we can't wait to show you the best food the city has to offer. If you love to eat, Palermo's food scene will be right up your alley. The food culture here revolves around nose to tail eating, loads of seafood and bold flavours. This is our third video from Sicily and we're here to hunt down the best local food. Watch out for famous Sicilian dishes, delicious Sicilian street food and a whole lot more. In this three-part series, we're eating where the locals eat. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. We are so excited to share Sicilian cuisine with you. The food is really heavily influenced by different cultures and its past and you will be so amazed by how different the food is here from the rest of Italy. In this video we're going to be eating some street food and then we're going to visit some of the most popular foods here in Sicily. We can't wait to eat with you. For our first stop we're going to be getting one of the most famous street foods here in Sicily which is arancine. So this is a deep fried rice ball. It's got some heritage that goes way back and we hear that this secret little place, it's a really hidden door, really hard to find, is the place to get these in Palermo. We've got our arancine and we've gone with the classic. So this is a um, ragu one, so a, a meat in, in cooked in ragu. So what it is, is a rice ball crumbed and deep fried. So really simple on the outside. So I think we've got to bite right in there and have a look inside. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Oh, that is really good. So it's actually not much rice. We've had quite a few of these while we've been here. They're normally much bigger and they normally have a lot more rice. That has not too much rice and a lot of that ragu. It's so, so tomatoey. There's not actually too much meat in there. So it'll have pork, but the little tiny bits of minced pork are truly tiny. I can see some um, celery and a ton of that ragu, which is super tangy. It's like a burst of tomato flavor. Mmm, that is beautiful. It's really light for a deep fried item. And you can see now the rice a lot more. So I've eaten through most of that ragu. And you can see the rice has a little bit of a color. That's because it's cooked in saffron. And these have a history dating back from when the Arabs were here in Sicily. This is the most conquered island in the world, they say. And the most conquered city in the world. So a lot of people have passed through here. And these date from when the Arabs were here in the 10th and 11th century. So the rice is a little bit yellow because it's cooked in saffron. Damn, that is really good. Mmm. The rice is perfectly cooked. It's nice and soft, but it's got a, still got a little bit of bite. And the outside, the crumb, is perfectly deep fried. It's not gone soggy. It's got a beautiful crunch. These are by far the best arancini that we've had since we've been here in Palermo. And I love this place. You can sort of see how secret it is. So it's got this tiny, tiny little hidden doorway. That behind me is a really main road, but there is no signage on the road. And there are people flooding in here for their arancini. And it's all locals because it's super hidden. It is a really, really good place and the quality is amazing. Those arancini were a great snack, but it's now time to settle in for a long Sicilian lunch. Now we have come to this trattoria that we ate at the other day. It was brilliant. They've been around since the 1960s and they do a lot of traditional Sicilian dishes. We can't wait to show you guys. Just like the last stop, this place is pretty hidden as well. And we're finding that here in Palermo. There's either really in your face touristy stuff where you don't want to be eating, or there's places like this. So this doorway, which when we first came, we thought it was the back door, but it's not. It's the main door to this restaurant. Buongiorno. No. Not right. Spaghetti? Si. Uh, pasta con Yes. So Giuseppe is showing us exactly how to eat this pasta con isare. So pasta with sardines. Sardines are really popular here in Sicily. And so you mix it all up and then add the breadcrumbs. 
Toasted. Toasted bread crumbs. The perfect sprinkling. Okay. Enjoy your meal. <laughs> Alright. I got service at the table. So pasta con sardine is a really popular dish here in Palermo. It is made up of sardines, there's wild fennel, raisins, and then the toasted bread crumbs of course. And it's a really, really delicious dish. I had this the other day and it is just mouth-watering. So I'm gonna grab myself a big old bite. If you like really strong tasting fish, this is the pasta for you. The sardines are really, really strong and fishy, intense, in a good way. Um, the toasted breadcrumbs add a, an almost creaminess because they're not crunchy. They sort of just uh, soak up a bit of the sauce and add to the texture of the dish. pasta is cooked perfectly. It's al dente so it has a great bite and the raisins are so sweet. Now it seems a bit weird to have raisins in pasta right but that harks back to the thing that Thomas was talking about before with the arancine um, about Sicilian cuisine being very heavily influenced by um, its conquerors. So the Arabs bought things like raisin and raisins and saffron and cloves and those types of herbs and it sort of integrated itself into Sicilian cuisine. This is delicious. Let's get some cheese for my pasta which is a super interesting pasta. Now we asked him which one we should go for and this is the one he recommended. And we've seen a lot of people around town eating this. And basically it's potato and meat. So you've got um, spaghetti and then you've got a crushed potato. I think it's probably just a um, boiled potato. But then it's got some herbs and stuff. So it's probably been boiled and then tossed in some butter and some little chunks of meat. So I'm going to get some cheese on there. Just like with Sheena's, we want to toss it and get that potato and meat mixed right through and that cheese coating. So you can see it's got a beautiful liquid layer down there and it does look kind of creamy and buttery. So let's see, I've got to get a big chunk of potato and a whole lot of meat and it looks like pork. I've got some potato and some meat hiding under that spaghetti. Mm. 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 Oh. Oh, that is a beautiful flavor. Mm. The potato and the pasta go so well together, that double carb. And the meat's got a, um, a nice little bit of fat on it, so you've got this beautiful sort of oiliness from that. And then I think there must be some butter in there. It's got a lot of salt, so it's got a lot of flavor. Mm. Mm. Wow. Oh, it's really good. It's much wetter than I thought it would be. So it's really creamy and the pasta is just coated in liquid. It looked really dry when it came to the table, but that is a great combo. And the potato is not too strong. So you've just got a nice coating of the potato. It breaks up into quite small pieces. This is a really neat restaurant. I love this environment. Super local. There's lots of old people, workers coming in for their lunch, just you know, just in their overalls and covered in paint and things. So it's a proper locals joint. Really good food. <laughs> Thomas is enjoying his grasa and I am without the pasta. <laughs> so what happened is Giuseppe, one of the guys who works here, he whipped my pasta away. Ah! Grazie! Um, he's whipped it back in front of me now and gave me a new portion because it was getting cold while I, while I was filming Thomas. It was so nice of them. course has arrived. Now if you're wanting to do the whole shebang, like the full long Italian lunch, you might start with an anti-pasti, so a, a starter, then you might go to a pasta course, then your second course which is a meat or a seafood, and then you might go dessert, um, you might have a digestive, a coffee and whatnot, but we just went for the pasta and the second course. So our second course is made up of Sicily's most famous dish, this is caponata, it's an eggplant dish, sort of like a sweet and sour eggplant salad and then to go with it a butterflied and crumbed pan-fried mackerel how golden and delicious does it look but what I'm gonna do is start with 
with the caffeinata. So the caffeinata you can usually have it as a antipasti with bread, so as a starter, or you can have it as a side with your uh, main or your second course. So let's just get in. It's um, chopped and fried eggplant, so chunks of eggplant, and then it's cooked with um, capers. There's some celery, onion, and a sweet uh, balsamic vinegar, so it's a little bit tangy. Mm. It's so good. The eggplant is super soft and it just melts in your mouth. And then the tanginess from that balsamic vinegar is great. It's really zingy and very lively. Now this fish. This fish looks so good. So I've got a ton of lemon. I'll just squeeze that oh, all over the fish. And it looks like it's got a lot of dried herbs on top, um, maybe some oregano, and then a ton of olive oil. So let's just cut a huge bit off. This is mackerel, which is a really oily fish. See that in there? Oh yeah. All right. Mmm. Breadcrumbs are really finely ground, so they just give a slight crunch, very golden. And then the fish is so soft, it's perfectly cooked. Mackerel is a very oily fish, and so it's quite strong in flavour, but it's beautiful, it just flakes apart in your mouth. Oh, delicious! It's really nice sitting down for a lunch like this with a glass of wine, and there's a great passion for eating here in Italy and in Sicily. So you're not rushed, there's no rush to get out, the workers can come in, they seem to sit here for a very long time for their working lunchtime. But there's passion for food, so people take time for good food and to have a great lunch like this. It's fantastic. <laughs> We're now right in the heart of town and after a big lunch like that, uh, we're going to have a granita. This is another super famous thing here in Sicily. It's a semi-frozen dessert. It's unreal. We've been uh, doing some research, finding the best one in town. You've got to see this. This is unreal. Yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah, what's that made alone? Ooh. It's a cafe con almond e pana. Yeah, almond, coffee e pana. Come on, I'll show you. Hey, faccio what's that made? No, pisci e gelsi. This is a brilliant store and it's run by the coolest guy. His name's uh, Pino, he doesn't have much English, but we don't have much Italian, but we have the best conversations and he comes up with the perfect flavor combinations for you. So Sheena's gone with a sweet fruity one. So I've got mulberry on top, there's some peach and there's some more mulberry down there and that's watermelon. And I've gone with a serious after a big meal one. This is a coffee one. So there's coffee down here, then I've got almond granita down here i've got cream a sweetened cream all over the top and that's covered in um in chocolate powder and so granita is basically i guess a slushy is the best way to describe it so it's a semi-frozen dessert which is then flavored with either coffee like i have or or nuts like i have or fruit like sheena has now it is mentally hot here so we've just got to dive right in look at all that cream and chocolate on top and i want to get right down there and get some Coffee. Mm. Oh man. Oh man, that is good. It's a very, very strong. So think um, smashing back an espresso in pretty much one gulp. That's what that tastes like. Really, really strong. I'll try and get some almonds so I'll get a bit of a combo of everything. <laughs> oh. Oh. The almond just takes a bit of the edge off the super strong coffee. The cream is beautiful and soft. It's quite lightly whipped and then sweetened. And that chocolate powder on top just gives it a massive sweet chocolatey kick. Good? Uh, anguria. Yeah, anguria. Jealousy. Peach. Oh. 
<laughs> My granita is turning to soup, so let's just get in. So I'm gonna get a taste of all three flavors, hopefully. So peach, watermelon, and mulberry. Oh, it is stinking hot here in Palermo today. So this granita is just perfect. It's totally hitting the spot. The granita, um, the fruit granitas are made from fresh ingredients. So fresh fruit is used to make these flavors and they are so intense in flavor. The mulberry particularly is really strong. Mulberry almost, um, I think it tastes like a cross between blackberry and boysenberries, but the peach flavor too is coming through. Mmm, just beautifully sweet and refreshing. And they say that back in the day with um, Granita, how they used to make it was they used to go up to the mountains because Sicily's quite a mountainous region, grab the ice from the top of the mountain and cart it back down to the villages and um, make the Granita that way. And holy moly, honestly, this is the best thing for a really hot day in Palermo. Oh, it's just perfection, it's totally hitting the spot. What an awesome day of eating here in Palermo. <laughs> Yay! Grazie, Vino! Best granita in Palermo! Grazie, yeah! yeah. <laughs>